Just making up for the last episode, I will show you results from some of the most interesting clicks from last season. If you want to return to action regarding Randers, skip to the timestamp you can see on the screen. Starting with Denmark, FC Copenhagen won the title ahead of Midland at Oldenza. Eik Athens dominated the Greek league, just like Young Boys in Switzerland. Notice how low did FC Basel go. The Turkish Super League saw a title fight between Galatasaray and Trabzonspor, with the first taking the championship. Rakov won the Polish league ahead of Lech, Pagan and Legia. RB Salzburg did the usual in Austria, while Krabbrich inched ahead of Royal Antwerp in Belgium. Ajax, PSV and Feyenoord fought for the title in Eredivisie, with Ajax coming up on top. FC Porto found themselves a little bit ahead of Benfica and Portugal. Wait, Olympic Marseille won the Liga? Bayern obliterated the Bundesliga as usual, just like Real Madrid in La Liga. Juventus came back on top in Italy. The Reds took revenge for Manchester City getting the title on the final day last season and won the Premier League. Meanwhile in Europe, Aston Villa won the Conference League after defeating Bulgarian side Lugolorets in the final? How? Europa League saw Liverpool having the last laugh on people mocking them for not being in the Champions League, where Real Madrid defeated Newcastle in the final? England still dominates the coefficients, and the top 5 stays as usual. Notice how high did Israel go. Now, let's return to Randers. Reminding you about the big news of Philip Bundgarser in the first place. Season 2 meant we've got a lot of business to make. With the board giving us half a million in the transfer budget, we had to earn back. That was possible with Mikael Pedersen leaving us for newly promoted Arberg for 220k and Edgar Babayan joining the Polish side Krakowia for half a million. Denzel Ovulse and Giovanni Dos Santos signed new contracts and we focused on getting new players from that point. We are looking for even a better centre back, but unfortunately, none of the deals were made. More urgent signings were needed in the midfield though, which allowed Watch to become a Slovenia merchant. He signed Jos Piszczek for centre mid from Domžale on a free and Andrei Pogaccia for the attacking midfielder position from Radomnia for half a million. We also got the Finnish youngster called Juho Lachtenmäki from North Zealand for 250k. With this movement in the squad, we moved ourselves to Aarhus for a training camp. But I wonder what's the point of doing so half an hour from home. We've played 5 opponents all from lower leagues, with the most notable being AC Horsens from the 2nd division. We've won all of the games, but I specifically want to highlight this banger from Giovanni. Alorentowicz. Sustained pressure from the home team, Boateng. Keane was calling for it. Far post. Only half away! Oh! Absolutely thunderous strike! A showstopper from Dos Santos! I will keep the highlights while talking about our transfers. During the camp, Vessel Damers left us for the Belgian side Lommel SK on loan with an optional fee. To replace him, we brought in a free agent named Kenan Watts. He recorded some decent number of games in Wigan Athletic, so we're happy to sign him. We are now ready to challenge for greater results at the Danish Superliga with an opener against Brandby. In the first five games of the season, including this one, we need to score at least eight points. Otherwise, the ball target will not be met and Watch will lose the managerial position. We lost in the 17th minute. Philip Bundgaard found a way to equalize though with a penalty. It looks like the first game of the season would be a heartbreaker, with Chris Garden scoring in the 87th minute. But remember we have Giovanni who came on from the bench. He got fouled in the penalty area and after the referee reviewed it by himself, we won a penalty in the final minute of the game and Giovanni converted it, doing the same thing as almost a year ago. The next two games though, wow. Silke work first. Steven Ode and Giovanni Dos Santos both scored the goal. Ode with a 1v1 and Santos. If you thought that's a one-off, just look at the game against Odense. Three goals in the first half, being a result of a beautiful display of football. Emil Berggren also came from the bench and scored one. So it made perfect sense that we lost 2-0 to Viborg, right? Right? Watch only needs one thing though, at least a point from a game against Velia. Although Steven Ode scored in the first half, the team did not keep the lead, which resulted in a drop. Disappointing result, as Velia just got their first point of the season. There's one positive in this result though. Watch kept his job. Just.